Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are Green Wisdom Health, home of your low-cost lab work and much-needed education. (laughs) Um, Here to give you another exciting show. Uh, This time, I guess it's uh, exciting. It's on brain fog, anxiety, and memory. Because many of your questions out there, and thank you for those, included something that had to do with the brain. So we, we just, forgot. But. Yeah. We, so we've worked really hard on trying to remember uh, <laughs> what we wanted to talk about today, uh, which is one of the things that people come in here and tell us that they're just, they have brain fog, which uh, if you don't know what that is, it's like low energy, confusion, headaches, trouble sleeping, irritability, can't concentrate, they have anxiety, uh, insomnia, which is one of our other shows that can't sleep through the night. Um, so Dr. Lewis is going to tell us today about why that's happening, what we can do about it, how to get clear-headed again, and make you feel like you're 18. So <laughs> go ahead and take it away and educate us with some great and valuable information. I'm not sure 18 would be a good place to go back to, but okay. Well, we had a mind back then. Yeah, young and dumb. and Okay, we won't go into that. <laughs> uh, you know, I just got off another podcast, uh, Men of Abundance and really incredible um, host. And one of the things we talked about is how America's been got uh led into consumerism and therefore we're much more stressed than we need to be some of the brain problems that we're having is just because we're overloaded and i think janet and i are very very guilty of that uh, sometimes i tell janet we need more time off we need to just sit by the lake and eat an organic hot dog if such a thing exists and some of it is problems that we get in our food we're going to talk a lot about that you know i like to talk about the chemicals because they're real and I, I find it very interesting that now uh, the news in Good Morning America is talking about things that I've been saying for 20 or 30 years, like, yeah, okay, I've been vindicated, and now you have been led down that toxic pathway, and now you're in deep trouble um, and need to be bailed out. And one of the things we talked about on this uh, Men of Abundance podcast is – getting people to love themselves enough to do it and be consistent. And I see so many people that drop out and then they have devastating uh, results. That's where I quoted the scripture the other day that Janet asked, was that Job or Shakespeare? Uh, let me, let me, let me just start with some of the mental things I think you should think about. Uh, there's a scripture, I think it's out of Philippians that says, do not fret or complain about anything. Well, what has happened in America? We're divided and complaining, complaining, complaining. And I tell people, I'm not going to delete my friends on Facebook that are idiots and think exactly opposite of me. Just because they're different doesn't make them bad, even though they're divisive and uh, inflammatory in their remarks. I I learned to love them anyway. Uh, The other thing uh, for people that want to get well, you cannot be pitiful or powerful. You can be one or the other. You can't be both. Uh, when you complain, you're going to get what you complain about. Um, there's uh, another thing in Philippians that says, do all things without grumbling. And, you know, I have to remind myself of that, too, because I worry about the people that don't do what's right and they have disastrous results. And then we have so many people that do the right thing. And I always want to take time to be thankful and grateful for that. Uh, We have this guy up in Point Orion, Michigan. I think it's Point Orion, Michigan. His name is Rob, and he's an incredible guy. He won't talk to me much. Call me Rob. I just like talking to you. And uh, he was uh, given a message somehow, Facebook, and Janet was answering him, and he was going about how good our team was and giving answers and da-da-da-da-da. And I don't know if he thought it was for me, but it was really Janet. I was driving the RV because we'd been in South Louisiana uh, because I identify as a Cajun. So I guess it makes me Cajun. Um, people like Rob that just follow instructions and are consistent. He's gotten some really incredible results. He puts time, effort, energy, money and more importantly, he puts faith into it, and he's reaped the rewards of his efforts. And, folks, that's what it is. It's consistency. 
So what you complain about, you remain in that. If you want a good payday in your health, you have to go to work. Uh, And complaining in and of itself weakens your immune system. So be thankful and create joy. And, And if you can't do it for yourself because you don't love yourself that much, which is a common problem, go out and spread joy. Bless somebody else. So you have to plant the seeds of joy and health and happiness, and that's going to help. So we're going to talk about uh, one of the things that's all over society, and you know now it's actually coming out, what I've been saying for years and years and years, and it's we're going to poo-poo Monsanto because um, they make Roundup or glyphosate, which is the active ingredient. And Roundup, which although I'm not a chemist, I think that's extremely close to what Agent Orange was. And there's some research I may get around to about Agent Orange. I know all kinds of Vietnam veterans. They got great results when they did our program, and some of them continue to do the program. The ones that dropped out are now dead uh, of cancer, heart disease, diabetes. Just because you say, well, I got exposed to Agent Orange doesn't mean that your body doesn't have the wisdom to get rid of it. Your body does know how to detox. It does need more nutrients then you can get out of our glyphosate-ridden foods. So you have to go beyond that. But there is an answer. Your body's smart. It can get well. So this glyphosate is the most heavily used agricultural chemical of all time. It's in our newborns. Um, It's much, much better to breastfeed your babies, but you're giving them glyphosate, which, again, it's better than giving them formula where they're getting genetically modified glyphosate-filled soy. That's not a good thing either. Uh, There's lots of plenty of research that goes on, and it's just all over. You, It's persistent, and it's present in everything. And I'm going to give you an example, and I've said this before. Uh, when Janet and I are out having fun, and we try to have a lot of it, uh, we like a beer or two on weekends. We don't drink heavy, never have. But when we drink a domestic good dark beer like Scheinerbach, and I love Scheinerbach, but because it's made with grains that are genetically modified and full of glyphosate, it upsets our tummies, so to speak. But when we go to a better beer, like she's into Erdinger now, and I, I like uh, Flensburger, you know, some kind of stuff out of uh, Germany, and it's not genetically modified, it's not sprayed with glyphosate, we can drink the equal amount of a good non-genetically modified glyphosate-free beer, and it does not upset our stomachs. I was just, that's funny you mentioned that. I was just talking to. She was just saying she wanted a beer. <laughs> I was just talking to a couple of gentlemen that came in here today. One is a an MMA fighter, and the uh, other one is uh, in his 60s, and he's doing the testosterone injections, and he's all buffed up. He, he looks good for his age, and uh, we were talking about estrogen dominance i said you you realize that the reason you're needing those injections is because um you're not utilizing your testosterone from and and doing things with glyphosate actually which um, is an estrogen mimicker yeah actually suppress testosterone function and he said well he goes you know i'm I'm doing these injections and i feel good he goes i love my miller light on the weekends and i said (laughs) okay and uh he goes "Do, do you drink it too and i said i do not drink that i said i drink beers that are straight out of germany and um, he goes, well, what kind is that? And I told him Erdinger, and he had this strange look on his face because if it's not Bud Light, Coors Light, or Miller Light, they don't really know what you're talking about most of the time in Texas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I yeah, said, yeah, that's racist, isn't it? And, or redneckisms. And I said, have you noticed that uh, those beers seem to increase bosoms in men? And he said, actually, I have. He goes, the bartender I get mine from, he said, his breasts are pretty large. I said, yeah. I said, that's why I was like walking up and saying, hey, I'll have a dark beer because, you know, 
your breasts are bigger than mine. And <laughs> she he, said it in a much more funny way, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he said, you know, I get it. But, you know, you, t- you could tell he was completely lost about where to get these dark beers. And, and we didn't realize that Shiner tore our stomachs up to the extent that it did either until we stopped it for a while and went to the uh, non-genetically modified dark beers and then went back and had one. And then you can tell, yeah, there's something in it that your body really doesn't like. And, you know, that that's a good thing because not just glyphosate or Roundup is an estrogen mimicker, but the plastics and pesticides we talk about. And it's we all get them, and we're still here on Earth so we can have a healthy, happy life. But you have to get enough nutrition in to allow your body to detoxify, which is phase one, phase two of the liver, et cetera, et cetera. We have uh, glyphosate found in all blood samples, urine samples. We're still getting DDT, and I've got notes on that. I hope I get to. We're still getting DDT, even though they outlawed it in 1973 or 74. We're getting it because they're spraying it in Africa, and it's, it's coming through the jet stream. We're, we're still, we're not immune to what they're doing on different continents. Um, glyphosate is contaminating air and water. And one time we were at a, a rest stop or information center in Mississippi, and I said, well, they're crop dusting out there. And, of course, you know, being the wonderful wife she is, she didn't listen to me. She was, you know, worried about shopping there. She's picking up some pecan oil. You know, I had to get Mississippi pecan oil. That's, that's right. important. Because it's good for our health compared to canola. Um, and uh, so I said, eh, okay. So we walked out. And we got, I'm talking about drenched. We got crop dusted, <laughs> and we weren't a crop. And we were sick as heck for mm-hmm. about two or three months trying to get that out of our system. But you can get it out of your system. Um, some of some of the crops, and that's one reason I'm really, really anti-grain, is because the crops are very highly uh, polluted. Lentils, peas, uh, soybeans, corn flax, rye, buckwheat, hops, hops and barley, hops and barley. Uh, canola is nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. Nobody should ever consume that. It's bad as soy. And then there's uh, evidence that Monsanto was caught lying about a lot of things, which, duh, uh, you know, it's been going on for decades. Uh, there's plenty of things you can uh, read about that. Some of the risk of glyphosate and other pesticides are nutritional deficiencies because it immobilizes different nutrients. And I think maybe even more importantly, it alters the gut biome. It kills your probiotics. So I'm a big fan of brewing your own probiotics and taking massive amount of probiotics. Janet gives me some uh, probiotics every night. So the increased exposure to these toxins increases your levels of glyphosate and formaldehyde in, in the food itself. Uh, then it gets uh, very toxic because of disruption of these bacteria. So I put in more and more and more bacteria. I know that bears repeating, I promise you. So it creates ammonia. That's a byproduct. Uh, it creates gut dysbiosis. And here's where I'm going to tie this in to brain fog. Gut dysbiosis, most of us have a belly full of candida, and those good books were written 30 years ago or so. So if you have brain fog, I automatically assume you have too much candida, and that's because of the toxins that's interrupting your gut microbiome. So I put them on benfotamine, and most of the time, within two or three weeks, they say, you know, my brain fog's definitely lifting. And that very much relates to depression, Stress, anxiety, and just the feeling of hopelessness. So if you feel like you're hopeless, don't try to do it yourself. Get somebody that can. Folks, if you got a spouse out there that's like that, for goodness sake, have them contact us and be nice to them. We've seen several examples lately of men not being nice and supportive of their wives. Well, you guys are idiots. Your wife's a better person than you are. Be nice to them, and they will multiply the nice back to you. So some of the – I want to talk about toxins, some other ones that are drugs. And this morning on Good Morning America, they talked about this yoga pose created – 
a stroke. Well, there's so many other factors. How do you know it was the yoga pose? And then they went on to say that a chiropractic adjustment caused a stroke. You know, they're poo-pooing chiropractic. And it's like, well, when you have fake um, things put in your body and it leaks silicone and causes all kinds of bizarre symptoms that you can't really link to the attributes that you paid so much to so-called look pretty. But I've seen people get these enhancements and have bizarre symptoms start within a year or two and just go down and nobody could figure out why. But So they're poo-pooing chiropractic, they're poo-pooing yoga poses. But here's the thing. Journal of the American Medical Association said that far in excess of 106,000 people die every year in the hospital from diagnosed drug side effects. Then it goes on to say that David, Dr. David Kessler, who was the former FDA head, says less than 1% of these adverse medical reactions are reported to the FDA. So then they go on, other researchers will say that 16,000 people die each year from gastrointestinal hemorrhaging from NSAIDs, that'd be aspirin, the aspirin a day, the Advil, uh, ibuprofen, uh, acetaminophen, But what they don't tell you is that can create about 100,000 more people getting congestive heart failure just from the drugs themselves. How many of you are in congestive heart failure and it was created by the toxins slash drugs that you were taking? So here's the problem with some of the way that we are taught to practice. They say reasonable and customary, and I think that's an insurance company term because I've never met an MD I didn't absolutely like. They were trying to help, too. But they have their hands tied by reasonable and customary. Well, one of the reasonable and customary things is 90% of all physicians, if you go into the hospital for something that looks like a heart attack, they never check magnesium deficiency because it's not reasonable and customary, even though it probably saved the lives of most of these people. It's reasonable and customary for these 16,000 patients to die in the hospital from gastrointestinal hemorrhaging, but it's secondary to taking these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We had a dear, dear friend that almost died of just taking Plavix, and it caused a stomach bleed. And I mean, he was right. He was fixing to go see Jesus real quick, except they had a vascular surgeon come in, barely in the nick of time, saved his life, and he says, you know, I see more people die of uh, this hemorrhaging than Plavix cures. So you get different doctors that have different opinions. And then, so my friend got off Plavix, and he started doing better and better and better, and that's after his heart attack and stent. His uh, very close neighbor's cardiologist, she begged him to get back on Plavix, and he says, do I look like I'm stupid? And he said it in a more uh, colorful way than that. Uh, but it was the Plavix that caused the bleeding, and thank God there was a good surgeon there to save him. And then when you get your statins, you know, reasonable and customary, they cause a CoQ10 deficiency. Well, okay, you've got a heart issue anyway, and then you're making it worse by causing a CoQ10 deficiency. That leads to depression, fatigue, what's called a mitochondrial dysfunction, high blood pressure, cardiomyopathy, congestive heart failure, it speeds it up. And that's one of the reasons, I'm going to slip this in, Janet, but we have a product that I absolutely love, and it's called Core Support. I mean, it's it's like... Yeah, if you want to fix brain fog, that's uh, a good one to do it with. Yeah, and, and, and the things that go along with all these toxins that I'm talking about, it's a scoop of powder, and it's incredibly popular here. We really kind of have trouble keeping it on the shelves. But if you saw what it was, was in it, it has all kinds of things I don't have time to name, but it has a very high auric value, and it has things that help you heal, like taurine, glutamine, uh, acetyl L carnitine, uh, N acetyl cysteine, etc., etc., etc. What's it's, important about it is for phase two detoxification, which that's for people like Dr. Lewis is talking about that take a lot of uh, medications, drink alcohol, oops, do over the counter, uh, you know, 
ibuprofen, that kind of thing. Or Benadryl to sleep every night. I hear that a lot. Yeah, it actually helps pull out those toxins because you have to have phase one and phase two, and this one is strictly phase two. And so people that are overdosing on energy drinks and all that kind of stuff, core support is a great one to help clean you back up and get your mind back because it helps with the low energy, which is another big issue with the um, brain and memory problems is that you don't have the ability to, you're just not motivated and it helps motivate you. So one of the reasons we do this is because we want you to be educated enough to make a really good decision because I had a patient not too long ago, and he was in the armed services, Vietnam era, although he was not exposed to Agent Orange. He didn't go to Vietnam, but he developed Parkinson's disease, and I had him on all kinds of stuff that would help him turn the corner, and he went to this great, grand, and glorious neurologist who is a very educated neurologist. He's really, really good. But they're talking about dealing with the symptom and not what caused it. And the, the, this guy's wife said, but this doctor was so educated. People come from all over the world to see him. And I said, I get people from all kinds of countries begging for my help, too. So here's the thing. Now, we're talking about brain, and it's not just Parkinson's. It can be any neurodegenerative problem. That can be headaches. That can be the brain fog, uh, all sorts of different things. Anxiety. Yeah, very much so. But most of the people say it's uh, impossible to uh, reverse, much less cure it. And then you've got actors like Michael Fox, uh, Jan- uh, Janet Reno, et cetera, that have that. It's not, you know, if a sick body created it, why do you think God and his infinite wisdom cannot make it better? And so the the doctor that this guy went to says, those supplements are hard on you. You need to get off those supplements. Really? Nutrition that's not in your food is hard on you. So the guy quit, and his health is going to heck in a bucket. Very obvious. And then I started reading some of the research to this lady. I don't know what she's going to do with it. It says pesticides are toxic to the brain. Journal of Science. Journal of Environmental Health Perspectives. Journal of uh, Neurology. Uh, there was a a meeting that said concluding the pesticides lead to Parkinson's Journal of Neurology, Journal of Environmental Health Perspectives. A weakness in the sulfation pathway of detoxification of the liver leads to brain inflammation. That's from toxicology. So that's what Janet talks about, the phase two detoxification and the core support, which you know brings that up into really working well. Well, one thing I wanted to ask is, is lab necessary? Is it, can you see any of the brain issues or anxiety, stress, depression, um, any of that kind of stuff? Would they have any of those things? Is it absolutely necessary? Yes. Will that show directly? No. But some of the problems, and therefore the solutions, are many steps removed from the symptom. So we can't think of you as, oh, you're a thyroid no, you're not. You're a whole person. We have to look at it. But and, it, it can be thyroid, right? Oh, absolutely. And it's incredible. We get so many emails every day that make us want to work harder. The people that compliment us, and it's like, yeah, God's healing the body. We're just having fun, you know. Well, the other one it could be is cortisol, having oh. it too high or too mm-hmm. low. That'll mm-hmm. give you bad brain fog uh, because you're stressed out. Having low iron. Gut dysbiosis. Oh, yeah. Iron's a big one. Having too high iron. Oh, yeah. A big deal. Okay. And we see that very, very commonly, too. Uh, having high insulin. Mm, yep. That's me. I have to work on that. <laughs> Guilty dog marks. Uh, yeah. Ow. So we always suggest you know, getting the lab, uh, the, the comprehensive panel, because it's 12 different panels, and that way... If you don't know what's causing your brain fog, it's a really good start. We can see yeast in there, like Dr. Lewis was talking about. Yeah, you suspect that with the eosinophils and basophils mm-hmm. and your low alkaline phosphatase, your low uh, protein, et cetera, et cetera. Ha- uh, liver enzymes being high very much can make you feel like you're tired, not motivated, um, and, and, confused. And, and for brain, I mean, there's a lot of things. Janet gives me things for my brain and my heart. I don't guess she cares much about anything else. But one of the things I take a lot is called membrin, M-E-M-B-R-I-N, because it has ginkgo, 
It has venpocetine. It has huperzine alkaloids. Now, if you will look at venpocetine, that is absolutely incredible. And I used to just take straight venpocetine, but there's more of it in this membrane, and it has other things that helps my brain remain yeah. multidimensional. That's <laughs> what we'll call it. Yeah, thank you. But um, anyway, consider doing doing the lab, the comprehensive panel, because it includes Dr. Lewis's consultation. So you get all these words of wisdom all in a 30-minute conversation with him. And it's very low cost. We do it across the United States. You can fill out a health survey and let him help you pick which panel's best at greenwisdomhealth.com. And I want to make sure that we've addressed these questions because this is such an exciting show. We're running out of time. <laughs> Uh, but one of them came from Jonathan. We love Jonathan. Um, he wants for you to talk about the link between brain injuries and dementia and Alzheimer's. He's he's had a um, concussion. Tra- yeah, traumatic brain and injury. And a traumatic brain yeah. injury, and he's rather concerned about this. And then he says, we're great. So i got to add that in, too. Thank you, okay. Jonathan. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's things like that that really do motivate us to do better. Uh, So the thing is that you have to feed the brain, and there's plenty of research that says if you just feed your brain all these things I talked about in membrane, but you want to go fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, and not all fish oil is the same, I promise you. We can tell on lab when you go to Sam's and get that crappy stuff there. Then you're getting their mercury that they've had out of the Gulf of Mexico, and so you can filter that too and have brain fog. So you can go like to seven or eight grams of fish oil, and this is the good stuff. The best we've ever found is from uh, orthobiotics, and it's in a triglyceride form, and it's the... Most absorbable. I've read the research on it. Uh, it. It's fresh. It's pure. It has a good taste. I've never had anybody say, I'm burping fishy taste. Uh, and it's tested independently. So it's not just that I trust this company, which I do, but they do have it independently tested and it's sustainable from our environment. So go up on fish oil, do the membrane. I do a lot of other things like uh, benfotamine. I do something called TMG. And uh, folinic acid, which uh, actually feeds the hippocampus. That's not a college for hippos, but it's a place in your brain and helps with short-term memory. So there's a lot of things you can do, but you've got to take massive action. You have to sustain it and be consistent. So, Jonathan, thanks for your compliments, and I'll work my butt off for you just because you're nice. (laughs) Love it. Oh, and Brian, and if you're wondering how these people are asking these questions, we're doing this on Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis. So if you're not a member on Facebook with him, he will include you if you'll just uh, add yourself in as an invite. He would love to hear from you, but uh, that's how we're getting these questions for the show. So we'd love for you to participate as well. Um, Brian wants to know, to go with that, What types of activities can a person do that will help to keep the brain functioning at peak efficiency as we age? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about aging, Brian. And I know you've undergone some pretty serious emotional uh, problems, uh, you know, loss in your family. You've got to stay active. Uh, I take a lot of things like uh, 5-HTP, taurine. What, what else do I take, Janet? I'm, I'm having a brain fog here. Uh, I take a lot of stuff he for the takes, brain. He takes a lot of stuff for adrenals because of stress. Yeah, because I, I blew them out uh, doing my job here, and I enjoy it. But, uh, Brian, number one, you need to call me. And uh, number two, so I can help you through this. And Brian's doing a lot of good stuff, but he's had some other things that we need to help him through. Um. I don't handle death real well personally, and I ate my way into being fat, so I'm about uh, 10, 12 pounds overweight, but I did it. I don't say I eat good like everybody else. So, Well, one of the things you can do is a product called Serenity if oh, you're yeah, full yeah, of anxiety. Yeah. Um, that's a huge one uh, that people seem to love. If you have depression and anxiety, try CeraVive, and that will help um it's like shooting into a cubby of quail with a shotgun. If one one pellet don't hit it, the rest of them will. That is an awesome kick butt product. Both and you know you're in Texas when you get that analogy. <laughs> I've never shot into a group of quail with. A, yeah, okay, I did. For for those of you that I know that listen all over the United States and in the she other apologizes. countries, yeah, <laughs> I, I, there are no words. <laughs> Um, I keep her smiling, so <laughs> she's not complaining. Cubby of quail. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have a question from Tara. 
that would like to know thoughts on eating organ meats. Do you think it's necessary? And again, Tara, we're in Texas. So whatever he's about to say, preface it with that. Well, yeah, Tara, if I looked as good as you, you know, I could push this even more. Tara puts a lot of work into her health. And, you know, people that she comes across, she helps a lot. Yes, I think organ meats are absolutely, incredibly important. That's why we get good results with thyroid, because we use products with desiccated thyroid. We have them with uh, spleen and thymus for immune system. And I think if we got back to eating organ meats like, you know, say my grandparents, you know, they were born back in the late 1800s, and they were healthier. You know, the bone marrow, the brain, uh, the liver, uh Yes, that it's incredibly important, and that's why it's a lot easier to get a meat eater healthier than someone that will not eat meat. And there you have it. Hey, I cleaned it up, Tara. Thank you. you did good. <laughs> and again, we thank you for listening to our show. Uh, you guys remember to take things for your brain so that you don't have the fog and have energy and feel like having a life worth of living. And please, if we can help you in any way, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We are available most all the time through Facebook and Messenger and email and phone calls. We hope you have a very blessed week, and we'll be here next time for the Green Wisdom Health Show. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.